Hi everyone, I'm Kate Murdoch and I'm the author of The Orange Grove. And I just thought I'd do a quick reading for you today. And in the scene that I'm going to read from, a couple of my characters have gone to Versailles and my character Letitia has just met her love interest, the Duc de Ray. So I'll start reading now. Letitia ventured a question of her own. You seem calm and straightforward in your manner. What do you make of Versailles, with its intrigues and manoeuvring? The Marquis laughed softly. It's hellish. The women are conniving and shallow. The men jostle day and night to be close to the king. They would sell their families and their souls for a loyal appointment. I've been here for six months, and it seems six years. I'm attempting to obtain funds to rebuild a village near my family's estate, in Sharp, which was raised after an uprising. If it weren't for this cause, you would not be conversing with me. This court is a den of rats, mademoiselle. Letitia's eyes twinkled. I'm also from a den of rats, smaller, but no less unpleasant. Speaking of which, I'll be in grave trouble if I continue to speak with you. The Duchess wishes for you to meet her daughter. She gave him a conspiratorial smile and he smiled back, his eyes warm and teasing. Estelle, Letitia murmured, rising to her feet, let me swap places with you. The Marquis would like to make your acquaintance. The young girl blushed and shuffled awkwardly toward the Marquis, her posture bent forward and her eyes on his shoes. The Marquis spoke in a gentle voice with the girl, his manner gracious. Before long, Estelle was tossing her ringlets and babbling about her book. The Marquis was polite and made thoughtful comments at the appropriate moments, but it was clear he thought her a child. Martine waved over a servant. Tea, please. Seven cups. Some cold water on the side and some almond pastries. You may run to the kitchens. I'm thirsty. Letitia felt Martine's eyes on her as the older woman twisted a fan in her long fingers her expression one of weary melancholy. Mademoiselle de Massenet, the Marquis was kind enough to excuse you from word games. I can see intelligence in your face and I would like to converse with you in the manner of the court. Follow my lead. Letitia sighed inwardly. She wished only to observe the glorious room and its occupants without being a focus of attention. Of course, Madame Fulbray, please begin. Your dress gives me distress as it needs a brace. Letitia raised an eyebrow. Did you not know? Crinkles are the fashion as they intensify passion. Martine's eyes sparkled. La mode, or is it to be put away in your commode? Ah, but la mode is different in the country. Clothing must be practical and functional. Feeding the pigs, the chickens, and riding horses. Not meeting chevalier, but chevaux. Not eating foie gras, but gras de pork. But Madame, I have met many nobles as fine as yourself in the country. The peasants have a nobility of spirit. Their clothes are crinkled, but their spirit is as free as an angel on a cloud. L'esprit de noblesse comme une comtesse, sans détresse. Martine smiled into her fan. Laughter was frowned upon at court. Bravo, you play well for a first-timer. Charlotte, what do you think of Mademoiselle's wit? Acceptable, if a little coarse. The Duchess accepted a small teacup from a hovering attendant. Wit is but one musket in an arsenal. Yet without rank, what use is it? Henriette frowned. It is my belief, Your Grace, that rank should be used to assist those less fortunate, not to deride them. Always the moralist, Henriette. I was merely making an observation, not being derisive. Henriette glowered but did not respond. The court ladies leaned forward on their chairs, eager to catch Henriette's retort. Letitia understood, in her friend's resigned expression, that she would not so entertain them. At that moment, Ramon de Villiers swept into the room tossing his hat to a nearby servant and scanning the room for familiar faces. He seemed relaxed as if visiting the palace of the king was something he did every day. 
Spotting the ladies of the Dunbois' household, he came over and sat down. Martin greeted him with a coquettish tone. Monsieur de Villiers, how charming to see you. The Comtesse de Bourbet was asking after you just yesterday. She said you gave an intriguing reading the last time you visited. Now, who have you not met here? The three court ladies had not made his acquaintance and extended their hands for him to kiss. Letitia watched as he stood and flirted with them all before taking his seat. Henriette resisted rolling her eyes as she watched Romain's languid performance. Women, it seemed, were often susceptible to his charm. Even the Duchess, who was reserved with men, softened her expression and sat straighter when he was near. Romain seemed to sense this and positioned himself next to her. On his other side, the court ladies did everything but prod him with their fans to gain his attention. Pestering him for readings, he smiled and gave vague promises of fitting them in, accepting a cup of tea from Martine. You'd never guess who I saw on my way here. He waited until all eyes rested on him. Do you remember Gilbert Fanchet, the singer? Just a year ago, he was in this very room, enchanting us with Italian arias. Well, I saw him on the back of a farmer's cart, sitting on a bale of hay with a pitchfork. I waved at him, but he pretended not to know me. Shame, really. I suppose he could sing as he herded sheep. Laughter almost breached the sanctity of the Salon de la Paix. The women's tightly bound torsos shook with half-suppressed amusement as they imagined a fallen singer. They hid their smiles behind their fans. Henriette spoke, shaking her head. I remember Monsieur Fanchet well. He's a good family man and a wonderful talent. His fall was a result of generosity to his swindler of a cousin, Monsieur Vomay. Monsieur Fanchet paid the legal fee so Vomay could avoid prison. His ignominy is no laughing matter. Ill fortune can beset anyone. The Duchess let out a loud exhalation. There she goes again, Saint Henriette. Do you even have a sense of humour? I do. Perhaps I would laugh if it were you herding sheep, Your Grace. What a splendid sight that would be. The Duchess smiled, but her eyes were like splinters of blue glass. I cannot imagine you herding sheep, Your Grace, Romain interjected. However, Madame d'Augustin is right about the singer. I have read the tarot for a number of years, and all too frequently those in exalted positions have the most spectacular falls. To mock such a descent is to encourage fate to similarly smite us. I shouldn't have told that story. We are fortunate to sit here among human gods, drinking the most delectable tea and feasting our eyes upon the delights of this salon. Hear, hear, said Céline, learning a look of rebuke from the Duchess. The others raised their cups and Henriette smiled at Romain. Thank you. Thank you.